I'm here with the ChargePoint Home Flex. The ChargePoint Home Flex is ChargePoint's latest and most dynamic offering for home EV charging equipment. Now, the, hard, the ChargePoint Home Flex is actually the second generation in the ChargePoint Home line. The first one came out in 2015 and it was simply called the ChargePoint Home. It looks identical to the ChargePoint Home Flex except the outer casing is shiny black unlike the ChargePoint Home Flex, which is dark gray. The original ChargePoint Home was offered in six different options based on power delivery, cable length, and whether or not the unit was plugged in or hardwired. In my opinion, there were too many options and I think it confused some people. I like that ChargePoint streamlined all these options, eliminated them, and created a flexible charger, which is why it's now called the ChargePoint Home Flex. Back in 2015, I was one of the first people to review the original ChargePoint home and I came away very impressed. At the time, I believed it was one of, if not the best home chargers on the market. Now we're gonna take a look if the second generation lived up to its predecessor. The ChargePoint Home Flex is capable of flexible power delivery. In other words, you can set the power output to match the circuit you have it on, from a 20 amp circuit that can deliver 16 amps to the vehicle, all the way up to the maximum power delivery of the ChargePoint Home Flex, which is 50 amps. Therefore, if you have a 30 amp circuit available, the ChargePoint Home Flex can be set to deliver 24 amps to the vehicle and it won't overload your circuit. If you have a 50 amp circuit available, it can deliver 40 amps. According to the NEC code, EVSE or electric vehicle service equipment can deliver a maximum of 80% of the circuit's rating. So if you have a 40 amp circuit, the most the charger can deliver to the vehicle is 32 amps. The flex, takes this into consideration. And when you set up the app after installation, you're asked the rating of the circuit it's on. And then the ChargePoint Home Flex automatically sets the maximum amount of power that it will deliver to the vehicle. So you don't have to worry about it. It does all the work for you as long as you know what your circuit is rated at. Now, uh, that's one of the biggest improvements the Flex has over the previous generation of ChargePoint Home chargers. While the original ChargePoint Home came with cable length options of 12 feet, 18 feet, and 25 feet, the ChargePoint Home Flex is only available in 23 feet. Now, although I'm generally a fan of offering options, I like this decision and generally don't recommend getting any chargers with less than a 20 foot cable. Even if you don't think you might need one, people often find out later on they realize they need one. I've gotten a lot of comments in the past from people wishing they had chosen to pay for the optional longer charger than the one they got. Unlike the original ChargePoint Home, the ChargePoint Home Flex only comes as a plug-in unit and customers can choose between a NEMA 650 and a NEMA 1450 plug. This one has the 1450. If you prefer to hardwire the unit, you can easily remove the plug and hardwire it directly. Um, installation is very simple on the ChargePoint Home Flex. ChargePoint has a really great installation video. I have a link to it in the description of this video below. Basically, we're going to do a quick overview of that video right here. They show how to unpack the charger, all the parts that are included, and then they show you how to install it. It's really simple. You open up the unit, you take out the packing foam. Uh, the first thing you'll want to do then is line up on your wall where you want to install it, which should be right on a slight offset to your NEMA 1450 or 650 outlet. It shows you how to level the unit. You're basically going to just need to drill three holes in the wall, one on the top that the unit kind of hangs on, and then the other two secures it to the wall. ChargePoint even includes the drill bit, the screws, and the driver with the, the, the unit. So you, you don't need any tools except for maybe a cordless drill. And then it shows you installing the last two on the inside. That's it. Now it's attached to the wall. Um, the only thing you do have to do is install the charging cable. For some reason, ChargePort doesn't attach the cable to the charger like pretty much every other charger does. But look how easy it is. You slide three wires in, snap the tabs down, and then connect the uh, one simple uh, communications connector. That's it. You close the unit up. It's done. Then you're going to snap the uh, case on it. Uh, they don't show you this in the video yet, but there's that. There it is right there. It snaps on it. 
and uh, they also provide you with stickers to put underneath the unit and in your fuse panel so you know exactly which circuit it's on and how many amps it draws. You plug the unit in, it starts uh, blinking and that allows you to pair it with your uh, device so that way you can activate the station and also have use of the app. I'm not going to go over all of that here, but it's pretty simple and it's all in the video. There's another reason why you may want to remove the NEMA 1450 or 1650 plug though. That's if you own a Tesla or another electric vehicle that can accept 48 amps of power. Now a NEMA 650 or 1450 outlet should be installed on a 50 amp circuit and can only deliver 40 amps to the vehicle. Remember the 80% rule? Therefore, if your EV can charge at more than 40 amps, you can't take the advantage of the full power of the charge point home flex. Now while for most people charging at 40 amps will be totally fine, some people may want to take advantage of the flex's extra power and the fact that their EV can accept 48 amps of power. Now to do so, you must remove this uh, NEMA 1450 or 650 plug and either hardwire it to a dedicated 60 amp circuit or have a qualified electrician install a NEMA 1460 outlet on a dedicated 60 amp circuit and attach a NEMA 1460 plug to the charge point home. Of course, I don't recommend you doing any of this work yourself. I always recommend having a qualified licensed electrician do all of your electric vehicle supply equipment installation and or modification work. Electric vehicles supply a tremendous amount of power to your car practically every day and quite often while you're sleeping. So you don't want to have any serious electrical problems at your home uh, just because you wanted to save a little money. It's just not worth it. Now that we've covered the major differences in the Charge Point Home Flex from the previous generation of Charge Point Home, let's take a look at some of its features. Now, the ChargePoint Home Flex is what we call a smart charger. It's Wi-Fi connected and the ChargePoint app allows you to view past charging sessions, see exactly how much energy your car took in and how much it cost you. Now, you can also schedule the time for the car to charge and, and save you with off-peak electricity rates. Although most electric vehicles today allow you to do that from within the car, that's built in. Connecting to the ChargePoint app is very straightforward and I didn't have any issues setting up my account. There is one potential issue I can see with the ChargePoint app though. It will only allow one ChargePoint Flex unit per account. So if you have two EVs and you buy two ChargePoint Home Flex units, you can't have them both on the same account. You'll need to set up a new email address, set up a new ChargePoint account, and another issue with that is ChargePoint also requires you to enter your credit card information when you open an account. That's because the same account you use for your ChargePoint Home Flex will also be used for any public charging that you do. You have one account, it needs to be tethered to a credit card so you can charge if you are using public charging equipment that requires you to pay for it. So, you know, that's the only little bit of a negative. Most apps don't require you to put in a credit card just to start an account. Now, it doesn't charge anything on your account, but it's there in case you need to make a payment, it's already set up in your account. You can also schedule a reminder to plug in and the ChargePoint Home Flex will send you a notification, which can definitely be a useful uh, feature, especially for new EV owners who haven't yet formed that habit of plugging in regularly. The ChargePoint Home Flex is also Amazon Alexa compatible and allows you to ask Alexa to start or stop a charging session for your car. You can ask it if your car is plugged in or not, or how many miles miles of range has been added in this last charging session. You can also ask Alexa how much you've spent on charging your EV this month, which is definitely a good feature to have. The ChargePoint Home Flex can also participate in utility demand response programs, which can be very beneficial. There aren't too many of these programs currently in effect, but in the not too distant future, I believe there, there will be. Basically, 
With a demand response program, you give your utility the ability to shift the time your EV charges, and in doing so, you get a discounted electricity rate. Sometimes it's a big discount. While there aren't very many demand response programs available today, I think that there's going to be moving forward within the next few years. So having a charger that can participate in these programs could save you money down the road. Now let's take a look at the unit. The ChargePoint HomeFlex is one of the smallest, sleekest EV chargers available today. It weighs only 13.8 pounds and has a very small footprint of only 7.06 inches wide by 11.19 inches deep. The J1772 connector that's used by the ChargePoint HomeFlex is a custom connector and it's only used by ChargePoint as far as I can tell. Most other home chargers use an off-the-shelf connector like the very popular one made by ITT. I really like ChargePoint's connector because it's not only high quality, but it just feels good in my hand. The, the handle uh, has a pronounced taper where your index finger resides, and the, the grip isn't a hard, slippery plastic. It has a soft, almost rubberized feel, uh, which I appreciate, especially when it's cold out. Now, Speaking of cold, it's time for our deep freeze cable test. <laughs> Last night, I placed the ChargePoint Home Flex in a freezer, and not just any freezer. I have a low temperature commercial ice cream freezer that's set at negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's negative 23 degrees Celsius. I deep freeze the chargers so you can see how pliable the cables are. This may not be an important test for those of you that live in Miami or San Diego, but I can tell you for those that live in the northern states and up in Canada, and especially for those that install their chargers outside, knowing how easy the cable will be to bend in the winter is very important. Now, some EV chargers, the cables on those units get super stiff when, it, when it's frozen or cold outside. They feel like a frozen garden hose. They just don't bend when they're exposed to cold temperatures. That can make charging your car very difficult. Uh, so let's take a look at how the ChargePoint HomeFlex cable performs when it's frozen. All right. It's time for the frozen cable test for the ChargePoint Home Flex. Inside this freezer, I put a ChargePoint Home Flex last night. It's been in here over 14 hours now. This is an ice cream freezer. It gets down well below zero. So let's take a look and see how the cable reacts after being frozen. Okay, so you can see the frost build up on it already. What I'm going to do is unravel the connector and see how well it ravels up. If you notice, I ravel, rolled it up tightly so it was frozen in a small loop. Now I'm gonna unravel it. You could hear it cracking, pull it out. And then I'm going to try to roll it up but in larger loops and see how pliable it is. My first indication is that this is doing very well. You could see the frost falling off the cable, but it's bending. See that? That's what you want to see. This, this cable's been at below zero for over 14 hours and it's bending nice and easily. All right, let me see here. So here we go. As you can see, it's not continuing to hold the form of those tiny circles. It's quickly regaining its pliability and allowing me to fold it in larger loops. This is great. This is above average. You can still see the frost on the connector. This is above average. The charge point home flex passes our frozen cable test. This cable would perform very well in below zero temperatures, especially if you have your car parked out overnight. You wake up in the morning, you wanna come out, you don't wanna pull the connector and have the whole cable ju just pull off the, uh, the connector uh, management, the cable management because it's all frozen. ChargePoint Home won't do that. See that? That's great. So definitely better than a passing grade. This is actually better than average, so it's gonna get an extra po uh, point on our charger rater score. 
The ChargePoint Home Flex comes with a three year warranty, which is pretty much the standard for quality home charging equipment made by reputable manufacturers today. The ChargePoint Home Flex is NEMA 3 rated, so it's fine for outdoor use. However, with some of the competing chargers has a NEMA 4 rating, which is a little better. NEMA 4 rated chargers can withstand even a direct blast from a garden hose without allowing water inside. It's my personal opinion that if you need to mount your charger outside and you live in an area that frequently gets blowing rainstorms and snowstorms for that matter, then you might want to consider a NEMA 4 rated charger. It just gives you a little bit extra level of protection. Now the cable on the ChargePoint Home Flex is average thickness and seems very flexible at room temperature. Here's a quick cable comparison between the ChargePoint Home Flex and a few other very popular units. Okay, let's compare the cables and connectors for some of the ChargePoint Home Flex competitors. First of all, yes, I know my head's cut off, but this was the best view to show you the cables and connectors. First up is the Tesla wall connector. It's a 48 amp high powered connector and it has a proprietary Tesla connector. Now you wouldn't want to get the Tesla wall connector unless you owned a Tesla because then you would have to buy an approximate $200 adapter to be able to charge your car because other than Tesla, all electric vehicles sold in North America use the J1772 connector which is on these other three units. Now the Tesla wall connectors cable is the thinnest of any cable available uh, on any electric vehicle charger currently. Uh, it's pretty bendable and pliable. Tesla did a really good job with the cable. Next up is the NLX juice box, also a 48 amp unit. Uh, NL uses the ITT connector and the cable is rather thick and it's kind of plasticky as opposed to rubbery. It's hard to bend. Of these cables here, in my opinion, it's probably the worst one. I can't wait to do the deep freeze test on this cable and see how it comes out. Next up is the ChargePoint Home Flex. Uh, average size cable, it's a little thinner than the, the NLX juice box and also a little thinner than the Bosch Power Max. Not quite as thin as the Tesla wall connector. Very pliable, rubbery cable. ChargePoint has a very good connector. It's soft, it has a nice feel in your hand and the cable is nice and bendable. Last up is the Bosch Power Max 2. The cable's about as thick as the NLX juice boxes but it's a little bit more rubbery, a little bit more pliable, not quite as good as the ChargePoint Home Flex or as good as the Tesla wall connector. The integrated connector holster has a swivel head which makes it very easy to holster the connector. When you remove the connector, the holster swivels up, arriving at a position that makes it easy to snap the connector back in when you're done. And when you return the connector, the beveled edge of the holster helps to easily glide the connector back in. Some EV chargers are very hard to get the connector right back into the holster. So let's take a look at the ChargePoint Home Flex's connector holster as compared to two very popular smart charging competitors, the NLX Juice Box and the Flow Home X5. Note how the flow unit has an exaggerated tapered edge leading into the connector holster. This helps to guide the connector into its locking position. You don't need to line the connector up perfectly with this opening. The tapered edge guides it into the locking position very easily. That's not true with the NLX juice box. The connector holster for the NLX juice box wasn't designed to be very user friendly in our opinion and you have to be nearly perfect to get it into the locking position on the first try. That's because there's no tapered edge and no allowance for even the slightest miss. If you're not perfect, the connector won't glide into the opening and it can be frustrating especially if you're carrying something in your other hand and you just want to snap the connector back into the holster. The ChargePoint Home Flex and the Flow Home X5 have backlit connector holsters which can help in a dark garage or a poorly lit outdoor installation. 
The closest competitor for the ChargePoint Home Flex is the NL Juice Box 48 Smart Charger, which can deliver 48 amps and has pretty much the same wide array of smart charger features that the ChargePoint Home Flex does. However, the NL Juice Box um, can also do something that the ChargePoint Home Flex cannot, and that's power share. So you can use more than one charger and share a single circuit. The ChargePoint Home Flex cannot do that. You'd have to buy a second unit and then run a second circuit if you wanted to charge two cars. So I've put the ChargePoint Home Flex up on the wall here to compare it to the size of some of the other very popular chargers on the market today. As you can see, it's one of the smallest, most compact units. Only the Open EVSC to my left is actually a little bit smaller. So that's important to me. I, I like chargers that are compact yet powerful. It's also the most powerful charger here it, to be able to deliver 50 amps. Now the Open EVSE, the Juice Box 48, and also the Tesla wall connector all can deliver 48 amps, which is very close to the ChargePoint Homes 50 amps. And no electric vehicle sold today can actually accept more than 48 amps. So actually, they're basically just as powerful because no EVs can take those extra two amps. Really doesn't make that much of a difference. I want to go over the colors that the ChargePoint Home Flex can display on the LED. As you can see now, it's a solid green color. That means the charger is ready to charge. If it was blinking green, it would mean that there is a schedule set. Maybe the customer's set on a time of use electricity plan, wants to save some money with overnight charging. The light can also be blue. If it's a solid blue, that means it's plugged into a vehicle, but not currently charging. If it's blinking blue, that means the car is actively charging. If that light is red, you could probably guess that means there's some kind of trouble. What you want to do then is contact ChargePoint customer support, run a diagnostic, figure out what's going on. The light can also be white. If it's solid white, that means it's lost its Wi-Fi connection. If it's a blinking white light, that means that it hasn't been activated yet. You'll see that when you first install your ChargePoint Home Flex, before you've paired it with your Wi-Fi and set up your account, it will be blinking white. Okay, so it's time for our ratings. Before we do that, I wanna say that uh, we're gonna be doing these extensive, comprehensive charging station reviews for all of the popular charging stations on the market in North America today. So if you don't wanna miss any of these reviews, please click the subscribe button below. Now, how we do the charger Ratings here is in two parts. First of all, what we, we have what we call our Charger Rater. It's a numeric system based on five categories. Each category, the charger starts off with 15 points and then points are added or subtracted depending on the features. The first category that we're gonna take a look at is cost and value. The way that works is we base the a base value of $500. If the charger costs more or less, points are added or subtracted. Uh, every $50 more than $500, a point is added or subtracted, whether it's more or less. In the case of the ChargePoint Home Flex, it costs $700, so it gets a four-point deduction. That's a big hit. The ChargePoint Home Flex is expensive, but it does have a lot of features. The second line is value. Now, try to base this on what the charger offers versus the price. Now, even though the ChargePoint Home Flex has a tremendous amount of options, it's a smart charger that has a lot of features, it's still very expensive. So I'm giving it a slightly below average score, which deducts another point. The ChargePoint Home Flex finishes up with 10 points in the cost and value category. Next category is power and weatherproofing rating. So the way we do this, the first line is uh, how much power it provides. Now, since the ChargePoint Home Flex can deliver uh, uh, 50 amps, that's uh, 12 kilowatts. What we do is we take the amount of kilowatts it can deliver and subtract 10 and then round up or down. In this case, 12 minus 10 is two. So the ChargePoint Home Flex, being a powerful charger, gets two extra points. 
Is the power adjustable? Is the next line? Yes, it is. It gets a point. The NEMA rating. If it's a NEMA 3 rating, which the charge point home flex is, it doesn't get any points, but it doesn't lose any points. The next line is Energy Star certified. Yes, the charge point home flex is one of the few chargers today that is Energy Star certified. It gets an extra point. Does it do automatic restart? Your car's charging, you lose power, the power gets restored. Will it immediately start charging the car again? I tested this out on a BMW i3. Yes, it restarted and began charging after a power outage. The charge point home flex finishes up with 20 points in the power and weatherproof rating category. Next category is construction and durability. The connector holster is the first line. It gets two extra points. As noted in this review, I really like the charge point home flex connector holster and how it swivels. It makes it very easy to connect it to the unit when you need to. Two extra points. Cable length, charge point home flex gets one extra point. Basically the way that works is, if the cable length is longer than 20 feet, it gets a point. If it's less than 20 feet, it loses two points. I don't think charger cables should be less than 20 feet. You might not realize it when you first get it, but then later on you end up figuring out that, wow, I wish I had a little bit more length with this. So one extra point for there. Next is cable pliability. You saw the deep freeze charger test performed excellent, gets an extra point for that. Robust construction, I rated the charge point home flex as just good. Uh, it doesn't get any points, it doesn't get ding any points. It's a Listen, it's a good solid unit, but I don't put it in the excellent category. There's a few chargers I'm gonna be reviewing coming up soon that are in that category, so stay tuned for that. Does it ha come in a plug-in version or is it only hardwired? The charge point home flex does come in a plug-in version. It doesn't gain any points, but it doesn't get subtract. You lose two points if the charger is only available in a hardwired uh, form. Next is ease of, ease of installation. I take it for granted that it should be easy to install these since they simply just plug in. In this case, the charge point home flex was easy to install, so it doesn't get any points, but it doesn't lose any points. Finishes up the construction and durability category with 19 points. Next is the smart or non-smart category. Yes, the charge point home flex is a smart charger. It gets five extra points for that. Can it power share? No, it cannot. Doesn't get any points, but it doesn't lose any points. Is it Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant compatible? Yes, it is. It's Amazon Alexa compatible. It gets one extra point. Does it record charging data and give you extensive reports on your past charging session? Yes, it does. The charge point has one of the best apps for previous charge uh, charging session recording and data. Really like it, so it gets an extra point. Can it participate in utility demand response programs? Yes, it can. It gets another point there. Finishes up the smart charger category with 23 points. Finally, we have safety certified and warranty category. Yes, the charge point home first, uh, home flex is safety certified. It's UL listed. I'm not giving anybody any extra points for that. I expect the chargers to be. They do, however, get a five point hit if it isn't safety certified. So no points gained or lost there for the charge point home flex. Next is warranty. The charge point home flex gets one extra point. The way I rate this is a one year warranty gets no points. Three year warranty, which the charge point home flex does, gets one point. A five year warranty adds five points. Less than one year, you lose five points. I don't recommend any anybody buying electric vehicle charging equipment that has less than a one-year warranty. If the manufacturer doesn't have the confidence in their product to give at least a one-year warranty, it's probably not built that well. Don't buy it. Finishes up the safety certified and warranty category with 16 points. That gives the charge point home flex a total of 88 points on our charger rater scale. But I don't just use this spreadsheet to award points for the chargers when I rate them. I then factor in my own personal opinion because you can't quantify some factors. The ChargePoint Home Flex is, in my opinion, one of the best chargers on the market. I really like it. I'm giving it 4.8 stars out of five. Now the charger rate of score was 88 points. If you put convert that to a five star rating, it would get 4.4 .4 stars out of five. So the average is 4.6 out of five stars for the charge point home flex. I would give it a perfect score if it was NEMA 4 rated, if it could power share, 
and if the price was a little bit lower, say in the $550 to $600 range, I think it would be the perfect home charging equipment in that case. But still, it still may be one of the best chargers available on the market. The numbers, my star ratings, is just a guideline to, sh to let the people know what they should be looking for in a charger and my thoughts on it. But everybody has individual needs. For instance, if you live in Canada where it's extensively cold through many months of the year, you get blowing snowstorms, you may want to consider a NEMA 4 charger that gets a lower rating on my charger rater score, only because that fits your personal needs better. But this way, the way we rate them here, Every B is all the charges are rated on the on a the, the same scale and you can compare them side by side and then make your own decision on which charger is best for you. Thanks for watching.